Hi, everybody. This is your Transformers read-along book. Every time you hear this sound, it means it's time to turn the page in your storybook. Now, if you're ready, we will start the story. Don't forget to turn the page every time you hear the sound. Three thunderous explosions ripped through the air, shattering the stillness of the high desert plateau and causing the earth to shudder. From deep inside the underground Decepticon headquarters, Soundwave, aide to Megatron, the evil Decepticon leader, rushed to the surface to find out what had happened. The radar screens had not revealed any attacking Autobots. What can be going on? Wondered Soundwave in confusion. Has our supply of precious fuel accidentally exploded? We have so little now. Outside, Soundwave found Megatron standing, holding his red hot fusion cannon. Around him lay the twisted smoking remains of Shockwave, the Decepticon military operations commander. We have destroyed Shockwave. Soundwave exclaimed with horror. Megatron whirled and faced Soundwave. Do you want to be next? He snarled fiercely. Soundwave backed away slowly, shaking his head from side to side. Oh, I don't think so, Master. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased with the way I'm going to put together, just as they are. Megatron laughed contemptuously <laughs> and said, Don't get your cassette all snarled up then. I haven't destroyed Shockwave yet. This was only a mock-up, a model of him. Next time it will be for real. I'll punish him by destroying him. Then he will never be put back together. He will never again dare try to take over the command of the Decepticons from me. But, Master, if you do this with all power against him, I need logic and reasoning. You wouldn't have to destroy him at all. This enraged Megatron, so that he aimed his fusion cannon at Soundwave's feet and tore up the ground around him. Soundwave slowly opened his eyes as he checked his parts for damage. He didn't dare look at Megatron. But the Decepticon leader snarled, What did you mean by that? Nothing, by the Megatron. Soundwave's voice squeaked. Really? Nothing at all. Tell me now! Demanded Megatron as he raised his cannon again. The words spilled out of Soundwave in a torrent. Well, Master, if you were to find a new source of oil to supply your Decepticon warriors, then Shockwave would lose the power he's gaining over them. They would no longer be loyal to him and will again be under your control. If we ever hope to return to Cybertron and finally defeat the Autobots, we must have more and more of that precious fuel. Shockwave has promised to deliver that oil to the Decepticons. So have I! Megatron exclaimed furiously. But he's promised that the oil more often has been greater amounts. He says your methods are not reliable. That you fly into rages too much. Ah! Megatron roared as he dug more trenches with his cannon. <laughs> Meanwhile, flying north in a slow formation, a large Dinobot group was making its way toward Autobot headquarters. Hours before, they had left the safety of their recovery base hundreds of miles below the Earth's surface. 
That underground base was a steamy jungle world, covered with the tar pits and bubbling oil that had preserved them for millions of years. Far above that jungle world, on the Earth's surface, lay the Antarctic ice cap. The Dinobot's progress was now being monitored in the Autobot Command Center by Optimus Prime, the powerful, wise, and just leader of the Autobots, as he watched over the shoulder of his aide, Prowl. Prowl reported, Things are looking good, Chief. The Dinobots are approaching the halfway point now. Wait a minute. What's that? Decepticons. Optimus Prime noted grimly. The Decepticon superjets, led by Starscream, ripped through the surprise Dinobot formation, releasing a hail of missiles and cluster bombs. Null rays lit up the sky as the Dinobot flight broke apart and scattered, planning to regroup a distance away. Flag, one of those scattering Dinobots, angrily headed away from the battle and decided to take his chances returning to the recovery base alone. He muttered to himself, That's typical of the other Dinobots. I told them that a large formation was a perfect target for a Decepticon attack, but nobody paid any attention to me. Well, they're paying for it now, but good. I went along with their plan, even though I didn't agree. Now, I'll go it alone. I can take care of myself. But as Slag moved into the shadow of the night side of Earth, he didn't notice the Decepticon warrior, Ramjet, coming at him, bearing down at top speed. When Slag finally saw the Decepticon, it was too late. He swung around and shot out a stream of 3,000 degree fire from his flamethrower. But it was useless. Ramjet plowed into him with a tremendous grinding force, ripping a hole in his side. At the Autobot Command Center, Prowl pointed to the screen, surprised and puzzled, as he told Optimus Prime, Look, Chief, the Decepticons are breaking off the battle and leaving, and all the Dinobots seem to be getting back into formation, except Slag. Optimus Prime studied the screen and nodded. Slag's probably been damaged. Send him back to the recovery base. Ratchet can repair him there. Badly damaged, Slag descended toward a large crack in the ice sheet covering the frozen continent of Antarctica. He circled once, then swooped down, disappearing inside the crack's sheer walls. Meanwhile, at Decepticon headquarters, two pairs of eyes were fixed on the computer screen. Did you get a fix on where he went in, you tape-filled idiot? Megatron shouted at Soundwave. Yes, Master. Soundwave assured him. The computer should give us an internal fix of the target any minute now. It had better, or your metal hide will be rusting out there on that ice sooner than you think. That Dinobot should give us the exact location of the Autobot recovery base and their oil supply. There it is, Master. I have a fix of the target. We must set the forward bit at an angle of 30 degrees. Excellent! Megatron replied as he gleefully pushed the activator lever of the thermal borer forward. Now we'll find out exactly where the Autobot oil is located. Then we'll go in and grab it for ourselves. We'll let the Autobots provide the very fuel I need to destroy them. Then I shall rule supreme over the Decepticons, taking away shockwave control forever. <laughs> Inside the Decepticon thermal borer, Soundwave kept a sharp eye on the sonar readout monitor. The pinging sound of the sonar's electronic search filled the command cabin as the borer melted its way deeper and deeper into the ice. They're down here somewhere, Master. Soundwave assured Megatron. They better be, Megatron said in a hard, even tone. Don't worry, Master. I'm sure the Autobots don't suspect a thing. Soundwave pointed out. Optimus Prime is too stupid to realize 
that our attack on the Dinobots was deliberately planned to damage one of them so it would return to its base and we could follow it. The sonar pinging speeded up, then suddenly stopped. Soundwave announced with satisfaction. We found it faster. The Dinobot base and their fuel supply. Deep under the ice, the thermal borer poked its nose through the ceiling of the cavernous recovery base. Alarms went off, filling every corner of the cavern. Pull back! Megatron ordered. At the controls, Soundwave managed to slide the thermal borer away, but not before the Autobot ratchet fired a small electronic device that attached itself to the borer's hull. With the Decepticons gone from the Autobot underground jungle base, Ratchet returned to his work on Slag, trying to repair the damage done by Ramjet. The Decepticon warrior had done a great deal of damage, so the job was taking time, too much time. This annoyed Ratchet, because it was taking him away from his important job of reactivating the Dinobots, still locked in their tar cocoons. They were needed to join the Autobot ranks. Meanwhile, back at the Autobot Command Center, Prowl observed to Optimus Prime, It looks peaceful enough now, Chief. Why, it's been days since we detected and scared away that Decepticon Thermobore. Yes, but we haven't seen the end of Decepticon evil. Optimus Prime pointed out, Their devilish plans have no limits. Well, I wouldn't worry about their finding the recovery base again, Chief. Ratchet reported that the memory scrambler mine he attached to their borer should have wiped out our base's location out of their computer's memory banks for good. Back at Decepticon headquarters, Soundwave pointed proudly at the numbers on the computer screen and gloated, Was I right? Fighting Megatron? Or what? There they are. Because why? All oh, the coordinates giving us the location of the Autobot bases. Autobots are such fools. Megatron sneers. Such inferior fools. It's only right that they should be destroyed. But they will be faster. They can't know that our thing needs a dropping shield has made their memory scrambler mine. Useless. We now have their base's location locked in our computer's memory banks. Transfer the coordinates to the computer controls of the Crusher! Ordered Megatron. Uh, Master, I think it would make more sense to be safer and stickier to siphon off the Autobot bases. Don't you dare think, you mechanical fool! I do the thinking, you do the working! Megatron snapped the sound wave. I haven't got time for such foolishness! That would take too long! Victory is within our grasp! I will not wait! I want it all! Now! And when I've got it, perhaps I'll destroy Shockwave anyway! Along with the Autobots! The Decepticon Ice Crusher was huge, driven by powerful fusion engines. It was a frightening piece of machinery. Its tremendous tracks could carry it over any obstacle. But it was its jaws that caused the most fear. Those towering, gleaming, razor-sharp teeth were made of the metal Tetranite and had the power to chew up anything in their path. Megatron loved the Crusher. He patted its cold, hard metal as he ordered, Prepare to board and fire up the engine, Soundwave! Yes, faster. The Crusher's engines burst into life with a violent roar and lifted it into the sky. Within hours, the continent of Antarctica was in sight. 
Landing on the Roth ice shelf, the crusher's jaws began to turn. The monster inched forward with a deafening sound. The ice shelf was being cut apart, creating huge new icebergs that immediately plunged into the freezing sea. Oceans were raised, flooding cities many miles north of Antarctica. Readouts of the crusher's approach appeared on the computers at Autobot Command Headquarters. What are we going to do, Chief? Prowl asked Optimus Prime. Although he already knew, there was little the noble Autobot leader could do from so far away. Launch all super jets immediately, Prowl. I'm afraid there's not much we can do, but we must try. Megatron cannot be allowed to pursue his evil ways without anyone trying to stop him. As the Decepticon Crusher approached the underground Autobot base, its vibrations reached far below the Earth's surface, making it difficult for Ratchet to keep his balance as he finished working on Slag. As the ground began to move more violently beneath their feet, Ratchet and Slag ran quickly for a safer spot. But as they ran, they noticed something strange happening in the tar pits. The terrible vibrations were causing the tar pits to steam and erupt. The swampy oil beneath the surface began to bubble and rise. Moments later, the crusher burst into the cavern as Soundwave exclaimed excitedly, we're in faster. We're in. I told you! Brute force and power! Destruction! That's the way of the universe! Logic and reasoning are for whips! Megatron growled as he paced the bridge, but unknown to Megatron, the Crusher's terrible vibrations had unleashed long hidden forces far below the steamy jungle. Breaking out of their tar pit prisons, hundreds of Dinobots began rising to the surface out of the black ooze of time. Sound waves spotted them first. Oh, my goodness, Master. We don't know now for sure. Stop running over the tape, you mega whip! cried Megatron as he turned the full might of his fusion cannon on the Dinobots. He blasted a few back into the tar pit grave in a last desperate attack, just as Slag and Ratchet joined the Dinobot charge. The attack ripped apart the Crusher at the same moment that Megatron and Soundwave rocketed away in the escape pod until another day. And the battle continues. <laughs>